could uh, really bend your ear when you got a moment. Every captain here's earned their stripes. The fleet will have the whole settled systems on the run someday.
smuggling beats a real job any day. A lot of us in the fleet before everything. Are you looking to start something? Because I'll finish it. Is Mina seeing anyone right now? Patience, I mean. I got a sword here. I heard his sister is some hardcore mercenary. I wouldn't get on her bad side. You'll never crush the fleet. They'd have to catch us first. In the fleet, you either put up, shut up, or die. Your choice.
strongholds for the Crimson Fleet. <sighs> changes are coming, Gale. Huge changes. Crimson Fleet will soon be a much bigger player in this little game between the members of the settled systems. That's quite a bold statement. Would you care to elaborate? Well, let's just say that I'm on the brink of a score so large, it makes everything else pale in comparison. Beyond that, the others have to wait and see. <laughs> if you aren't willing to discuss the details, why grant SSN end this interview? Simple. I refuse to allow the UC to spin or bury the story, making it sound like they're in complete control of the situation. I'm gonna tell you right now, they aren't. Why does the Crimson Fleet need to make this mysterious move that you're being so evasive about? <laughs> I know Sysdef instructed you to draw this meeting out as long as possible. So let me sum this up. I intend to make sure that the Crimson Fleet becomes the United Colony's worst nightmare. And nothing, I mean nothing in this universe, will stop me from achieving that goal. There are those that would disagree with you and claim this interview is grandstanding, or worse, a recruitment tool. After all, SSNN reaches every corner of the settled systems, and your aspirations could inspire the Directionalist to turn to the fleet. You and the sheep that listen to your garbage can believe whatever the hell you want. If you were so worried about what I had to say, you wouldn't have allowed yourself to be brought here. So, now that we are all here, it's time to get down to business. The two of you are the only rooks that have made the latest cut. The rest, well, let's just say they won't be joining us ever again. Neva's willing to put her neck on the line and vouch for you, which means you've got what it takes to join the Crimson Fleet. You'd better not disappoint, or you'll find yourself answering to me, personally. All right, let's get started here. When you sign up with the Crimson Fleet, you're in it for the long haul. No one quits. No one retires. The only way out is death. You stay loyal, or you pay the consequences. Fleet before friends. Fleet before family. Fleet before yourself. Of course we have rules. If you think the Crimson Fleet was built on a lawless dream, think again. Our influence, our money, our respect comes from meticulous planning and every last soul in the fleet following my orders to the letter. That is why you need to learn to place the fleet before everything. Boss. <laughs> Good. You're getting it already. I like that. Can we get on with this? I want to get drunk at the last Nova. I'm impressed. That is the first intelligent thing you have said this entire time, Mathis. Since you two seem so eager to move forward, 
Let's get to your next job. Pack your cold weather gear, Rooks. Where we are going, you're going to need it. Oh, God, don't tell me you're dragging him down to Suvaral for another one of your little initiation runs. Ten Johns to the surface, twelve dead Rooks. You'd think by now you would have given up on that goddamn campfire story. Crix's legacy is no story, neighbor. We've got fresh eyes in the fleet. And if these two want to impress, they're going to help me search those ruins. I hope you're right, Dale. That new code we grabbed for the lot cost us a ton of credits. And a decent captain. This initiation, as Neva calls it, is your chance to see where it all began. On Suvorov with Jasper Griggs. Griggs led the riots that gave birth to the Crimson Fleet. And if his legacy is still out there, we're going to be the ones to find it. Through a bit of luck and a hell of a lot of cash, Neva was able to get her hands on an access code to the inside of the lock. This will be the first time someone from the Grinson fleet has set foot in there for... Well, since Grix left the place behind. It has been frustrating being this close to potential clues, but not being able to find a way through those prison walls. Of course. Where else could I find such a perfect location to weed out any rooks who'd be wasting the fleet's time? What? Were you expecting a goddamn graduation ceremony? Think I'm just going to slap a skull on you and send you on your way? Make no mistake. You are being tested all the time. Every job you take will be under constant scrutiny. And neighbor? Oh, she's just waiting for you to screw things up. Before Crix left the fleet, he left a message talking about a major score. One that would set up the fleet to be a big player in the settled systems. Somewhere down the line, they started calling it Crix's legacy. And everyone who's tried to find it has wound up empty-handed, missing, or dead. If we're gonna beat those odds, We'll first need a lead, and I would wager we will find one on Subarov. Dale's leaving out the best part. That this whole search is based on a handful of words on a very old slate. Crix left a lot of big talk on that recording, and not a lot of facts. Some of us believe in it more than others. <laughs> Don't listen to her. When we get our hands on Crix's legacy, the fleet will be operating at a completely different level. We will become more than a match for UC Sysdef. Listen to the words that I am saying. The legacy is real. You will find that out in due time, provided you're willing to put in the work. Nothing worth having ever comes easy. Hey, I've done my fair share of treasure hunting. Never panned out. But I'm sure this time is gonna be different. You forget the UC is still licking its wounds from the colony wars. They don't have the capability to mount a full-scale assault. And if they were foolish enough to attack, we would have the manpower to push those pendejos right back to Jemison. If we have Crix's legacy. Exactly. Now you're beginning to understand. Okay, enough discussion. We have got a lot of work to do. To that end, the next stop is the lock. I've had Jazz feed the coordinates into your ship's computer. Since Mathis doesn't have a ship, he's going to ride with me. I'll see you down there, Rook. Don't keep me waiting. Yeah? Is this important? Because I'm pretty sure you've been given orders.
might want to kit yourself out for the trip below. Just saying. Get lost. I'm trying to get ready for the job. You should do the same. Don't even start. My instructions unclear. What do you want? Don't you have business on Suvarov? Let's put it this way. I know Delgado needs something to give rooks like you some confidence. But let's get real for a second. Do you really think Crix could hide that much wealth and keep it hidden from the rest of us for over a hundred years? No way. Secrets last as long as supernovas around here. No one can keep their mouth shut unless someone shuts it for them. Nah, <laughs> it's all a bunch of bullshit. Look, I'm not trying to bust Dale's balls. He's not the first to go looking for that fairy tale, and I'm damn sure he's not gonna be the last. What kind of stupid question is that? This is the Crimson Fleet. Trusting someone is as pointless as trying to carry water in your bare hands. Do you have any idea how many assholes I've had to put down because they decided to try and make a run at me? Or Dale? Way too many. Just follow directions and keep making the fleet money. And we won't have a problem. Clear? Mathis is a real piece of work. Adler shoveled him onto us about a week before you turned up. One of the greediest rooks I've seen come through the key in a long time. Dumb as a bag of spanners, too. Do you know he had the guts to ask Delgado for jump fuel compensation after being asked to fly out here? He didn't get it, but damn. If you want my advice, save everyone the trouble and make sure he doesn't come back from your little planetary excursion on Suvorov. Because that's exactly what you are. A rookie, a newbie, fresh meat. Beneath all of that inexperience, I'm sure you have an actual name. But honestly, no one gives a damn. So get used to hearing that word. Until you earn your stripes, you're a rook to everyone in the fleet. We'll talk later. Were my instructions unclear? What do you want? And I suppose it can't possibly wait until we get down there? Fine. What is it? There is no deal. You and Mathis are two sides of the same coin. A couple of rooks fighting for a spot in the fleet. Only problem is that he is down a ship and you are not, which puts you ahead. Just barely. Who knows? Maybe he'll get lucky and you won't make it off Suvorov in one piece. It's cold. Bitter cold. Just about the last place you would want to find yourself without heat. The few living things that can survive the extreme temperatures are constantly fighting to stay at the top of the food chain. The Crimson Fleet called Suvorov the White Hell. To me, it's paradise. Someone up here pisses me off enough, I send them down to the surface for a little overnight visit. Snaps them right back into line. The UC built the lock as a supermax prison a little under... Well, it must have been at least a hundred years ago. Before that, those Concha Jesus Padres marooned prisoners on the planet's surface and left them to their own devices. As you can imagine, these turned into some kind of... demented survival of the fittest. Prisoners killing each other for a chance at the meager supplies. Luckily, some whistleblowers back in New Atlantis saw this as cruel and unusual punishment and pressured the UC into building the facility. Five years after the prison was completed, 
Cricks touched off the riots that overran the lock and eventually the key. Nobody knows exactly what went down. I mean, there's all sorts of rumors. Creeks was in prison for almost five years, and judging from the look of the facility, every moment must have been miserable. I suppose he just got fed up and decided to take matters into his own hands. Got the prisoners behind them and kept pushing until he reached the key. The cojones on that guy. UC's toughest supermax prison, and he just waltzed the hell out of there like it was nothing. I would love to have been a part of that. Fine, then get moving. Were my instructions unclear? What do you want? <laughs> I could tell you stories that would last for hours. But now is not the time. You have a job to do, and I don't like to be kept waiting. When you... Well, if you get back to the key. I am sure you can find some copies of the interview he gave to SSNN around here, somewhere. I think those recordings might give you the history lesson that you are looking for. Yeah, I suppose. I thought Delgado needed you on the planet. Why are you talking to me? some stuff on my mind when you have the time.
No wonder no one will work for you. My man is missing, and you're all just here, what? Waiting for him to wander back through the gate? Mr. Halftown, we are trying. But we don't have the manpower. And now half my crew thinks your little band of convicts is just waiting to drag us off and scrap us for organs. Mr. Halftown, our security officer has been put into the infirmary trying to find your worker. We're doing everything we can. All I ask is that you and your crew be patient. You have nothing to fear from us convicts. We are handling it. Then get it done. Or else we are going to have problems. You have my word. I'm sorry, are you lost? Because if you're here to enroll someone, I'm afraid we're having a... just a minor crisis. And it's going to be a while before we're evaluating any applicants. Where do I begin? It's been a cascading series of issues. The most recent is that one of our construction workers has gone missing, and attempts to find him have turned up nothing. Which is what this retreat is going to be if we don't manage to find him. So, I hope you'll understand why I can't take your application at the moment. This is, well, will be the Elios Retreat. Someday we hope for it to be a bastion of education and growth for some of the galaxy's most needy. It's incarcerated. That, however, is feeling more and more like it might never happen unless we resolve our current crisis. So it might be best if you just moved along. Oh, that's awfully kind of you, but... You know, we could use some more manpower, actually. Speak to Sloane. She's been taking point on the... Well, she'll be able to explain it all. Currently, very little. But once we're open, should that day ever come, we hope to have all manner of training and personal development courses available for our residents. Most of our staff are formerly incarcerated themselves, so we hope to be able to provide a level of service unlike any other in the galaxy. Currently, very. But once we're up, should that day. We hope to have most of us. Well, our construction foreman, Mr. Halftown, is understandably upset that a member of his crew has gone missing. It's put a complete stop to all work on the facility, as Mr. Halftown's crew doesn't believe the staff and myself can be trusted with their well being. And our attempts to defuse the situation by finding the missing crewmen have failed thus far. Sloane's been trying to keep everyone calm, but I honestly don't know how much longer this can go on. Ah, I'm the facility's chief administrator, co-head of the whole retreat with Sloane. She handles most of the resident side of things. Making sure we've got the right people for the program, and those people have the right tools to succeed in their own development. I keep the lights on and make sure things hum along smoothly. Which has been harder of late. Ah, I am the sole exception. I was a neighborhood administrator for years in New Atlantis. Was tasked with maintaining the well section of the city. Home to many of the UC's most underprivileged citizens. I saw firsthand what havoc the bounty system could cause in a neighborhood. Parents in prison, money funneled away from basic needs. It can become a cycle. Here, we hope to give people the tools to escape it. So much to get done. I'm so bored. I can't get my eyes to focus. Look, if you're here making a delivery or something, you're not doing it. Oh. 
those cons are just waiting. I'm not picking up a rivet until all this gets fixed. My crew isn't lifting a finger until my man is found. <sighs> Can't believe I bought into this place's crap reform program story. I'm supposed to be the construction foreman. It's my job to make sure the Helios retreat gets built to whatever standard these folks want so they can run this reform program or whatever. But it's also my responsibility to make sure my crew can do their job safely, which sure as hell isn't the case right now with one of my people missing. So right now, I'm just waiting. Why does anyone take any job? Credits, and these folks have plenty. But I mean, come on. What they're selling here? Fixing the settled systems by giving criminals career training? You really think the Crimson Fleet are just one typing course away from becoming model citizens? Never been on the receiving side of a visit from the fleet, huh? And look, I know some folks have a tough out there. I've employed my fair share of ex-cons over the years. But you know how they turn their lives around? They did their time and got jobs instead of making the same bad choices again. Those are options everyone's already got. No retreat required. But I'm sure you didn't come here just for a debate. Let's talk about something else. Because I'm not the one whose job it is to keep this place secure. I'm just the guy who thought I could trust the people giving us this job. Oh yeah? can't be worse than the situation we're already in. The boss, Sloan, she's heading up the manhunt, if you can even call it that. Talk to her and she'll get you up to speed. We'll be around. Dropping off? Didn't think we had any deliveries until next week. Got an invoice I can look at? Take care now. You dropping off? Is that so? 
That's awfully unusual, seeing as neither of them know the first thing about how our inventory system functions. You're sure you dropped it off with them? Nice try. But I'll happily take yours. We're still just getting started, but I've got all the basics if there's something you need. I'll be here. Take care now. You dropping off? Didn't... Is that so? You're sure you dropped it off? Well, we wouldn't want it to come to that, would we? Here, what you're owed. Now, if you decide you want to return some of these credits our way, I'm Monica. Happy to show you what we've got for sale. The construction foreman, Half Town, and his crew were scrambling their undergarments because one of their guys wandered off the other night. Probably a little too much glug glug. But now the entire construction crew thinks we're going to slit their throats just because most of us have a criminal past. But look, if you want to get involved, Sloane's been coordinating the manhunt. She'll have all the info you might need. Mm hmm. Most of the staff here are. Got me for digital intrusion and grand larceny. Was in a bad place. Needed a lot of funds. Fast. So I hacked a couple of Galbank servers. Had maybe six years left on my sentence in Aquila when Sloane and Nevin swooped in. They said they'd pay off my whole bounty. I didn't have much else going on, so I said sure. It was hard work. But Sloane, the woman is compassion in human form. She stuck with me. And now I'm here, running the retreat shop and maybe someday one of my own. Sure did. Anyone who commits to joining the program gets their bounty paid off by the retreat. Not sure who's footing the bill, though. I presume it's coming from outside donations, because Sloane and Nevin aren't exactly rolling in cred sticks. They've got all the necessities. Catch you later. We've got all the basics. And that's basically it.
I hope Cora doesn't get too much underfoot. If you're going anywhere other than right here on Ixil, I'm the woman to talk to first. Any necessities you need, I can help.
not ours. Uh, when the time's right, I'd appreciate a chat. I, I'd, uh, I'd appreciate your advice. After our last talk, I... My eyes feel a little more... at peace. A little more... whole. Cora's grandpa, good old Jacob, well, he just will not stop pestering me to see Cora, and that's complicated. I mean, can you blame them? She's something else. But things with my dad. My early years, they uh, weren't good. My mother died when I was seven. Some people have such strong memories from their early life. Me, I mean, I remember her. I have some pictures. I remember the feelings, but just a few clear memories. She had these truly ancient cameras, like caveman type things. To a room with a red light, she developed pictures she took in this chemical bath. I remember sitting on a stool, looking up at them slowly fading in, and it was like alchemy to me then. And that's all I have. Just glimpses like that. She banged up her knee real good in an accident. So she went in for knee replacement. It's supposed to be routine, but that damn Anesthesiologist dropped the ball, and one day mom's fine. When the next doctors take her away, oh, it's all right, it's ancient history. So Jacob raised me on his own, and shit, maybe I don't give him enough credit. I mean, I know how tough it is, but he was strict, hard. Dad was a longtime civil servant, a big man in government, and he had a future all laid out for me. Man, could he get his hooks into you. He was scary good at that. At his height, he was some sort of trade minister, a very prominent man in Aquila City. After I came along, he stepped down to a lower posting. We still had a finger in trade all over the collective. I can't deny it. He sacrificed a lot to be closer to Mom and me. At his height, he was some sort of trade minister, a very prominent man in Aquila. And after I came along, he stepped down to a lower posting. We still had a finger in trade all over the collective. I can't deny it. He sacrificed a lot to be closer to Mom and me. <sighs> Maybe. But it was tough to live up to his exacting expectations. But I tried. I felt the weight of legacy. I wanted to do him proud. He said I had to learn the business, run some freight, see how credits flow, speak the language. Meanwhile, he's working some angle for a government job for me after. That sounded even more miserable than what I was doing. I started to, many, many times. He'd always steer the conversation away or just use logic to dissect every little point. Once I held my ground, 
And he said, I was an ungrateful child, not worthy of what he was doing. I know, right? Even after I was with the Rangers, Dad was just always needling, angling for me to join the government. But by then I knew myself more, and I could stand up to him. And Lillian, well, she helped. If I let Jacob into Cora's life, he'll dream up some big future for her and tie her into knots like he did with me. A man could teach a master class of manipulation. So, set up some ground rules, like you said I should do with Lillian? Ah, oh, I don't think it would work. But it... Might be worth trying. I guess I got more to think about. These guys certainly aren't lacking in ambition. Send you with my next round of painkillers? Can't come soon enough. Look, I should rest. So how about you leave me alone?
Maybe he'll just come wandering back. One can dream. I'm sorry, love, but the Elios retreat isn't taking new residents right now. We've had some issues, a missing person chief among them. But you're welcome to rest up and refuel here as long as you'd like. So long as there's no bounty hunter after you that's going to kick my brand new door off its hinges. Well, at the moment, it's primarily a collection of shipping containers and unused construction materials. But the plan is to make this place into a growth and education residence for the galaxies incarcerated. We'll offer job training and a support network for folks that otherwise just while away their days in prison just because they didn't have the credits to pay their own bounties. Get them all the tools they need to set up regular, boring lives like the rest of us. Well, thank you. Always striving to make my presence in the universe a net positive. 
but still got a lot of ground to cover. But I'm sure you didn't come all this way just to listen to me blabber. You're probably exhausted. Monica should have any supplies you might need. She's just out front of the main building, and our ship services tech is out near the landing pad if your vessel needs some tending to. And if you need anything else, or just want to talk, you come find me. Well, like I mentioned, the retreat's our modest attempt to change how the galaxy deals with those who find themselves on the wrong side of the law. Once we're open, the goal is to take in people whiling away in prison because they couldn't pay their bounties. We'll get them job training and a support network. All the tools they need to set up regular, boring old lives just like the rest of us. We're trying to do what we can to help those who need it. Well, once we officially open our doors, the retreat's going to have to be a lot of things to the formerly incarcerated folks we plan to bring here. Residence, school, a place for reflection. Nevin, he handles everything infrastructure related, while I take care of everything our residents might need to get them moving along healthier paths. I make sure we've got the facilities to support everyone. I arrange all our occupational training. Even got my counseling certification a few years back so I can serve as a compassionate ear when people need it. If you can believe it, I was Crimson Fleet. Scouring the skies for loot and glory. Ended up finding a hefty prison sentence instead, which, honestly, was probably the best for me and the galaxy at large. I'm not gonna tell you there weren't things I enjoyed. But you've got to understand, that sort of life is a short fuse. I hope for your own sake, you'll look for other paths, love. But I'm sure you didn't come here for an ancient history lesson. Was there something else you wanted to discuss? That the truth? Because I can't say it's going to be easy work. But if you found the construction crew's missing man, we'd all owe you. This planet, it's not the most accommodating to human life. It's wild, empty, and the local fauna, well, they're not big fans of humans. So while I will absolutely take your help if you're offering it, I just want you to be aware, I don't expect it's going to be a walk in the park. Well, he was last seen a few days ago, so we don't think he could have gotten far. We sent our lone security officer to find him, but things didn't go according to plan out there, and now he's taken up residence in our infirmary. So if you're offering, we'll absolutely take the help. You don't know how happy I am to hear it. First things first, you want to speak to Greg D'Angelo, our security officer. He was wounded searching for our worker, Mr. Kilman's trail. He should be able to get you pointed toward Kilman's last known location. not the term I'd use, but that was part of my life at one point. So you know how to use a weapon then? I swore that all off a long time ago. Of course. But if push came to shove, you know, if something else was to happen to the people here, you could use one, right? There are no ifs to it, Nevin. The pirate's loan to Mitope is gone. I'm never picking up a weapon again. I understand, Sloane. 
I apologize for even bringing it up. It's all right. Thank you again for helping us. Greg will be able to get you on the right track. I'll be around. Or you. Can't a guy heal in peace? I got gored. Was out hunting for this dimwit construction worker when something comes charging out of the overgrowth and puts a horn or a claw or something in my gut. I never got a good look at it. But it must have been huge, because it laid me out. It took me six hours of crawling to get back here. So unless you need something right now, I'd love to get back to closing up the hole in my torso. Sloan found someone else, huh? Well, hopefully, uh, you'll have better luck than I did. I managed to turn up some tracks outside the facility. Bit of a hike, though. Not sure if they were Kilmans, but Ixel's not exactly a bustling metropolis. There was a cave system I scanned nearby, but I got attacked before I could look any further. Next place I was planning to visit once I was on my feet again. I'd start there. There was a cave system near where I lost his trail. That's where I'd go.
you go. Thank you very kindly. No, no, I'm not going back. Stay away. Oh God, please, please don't put me back in the bag. I'll do whatever you say, just please, not the bag. What happened? You're, you're not here to... I, I was kidnapped. He caught me off guard after hours, threw a bag over my head and marched me off. But I escaped. But then his creatures started hunting me. So I ran in here. And I've got no food, and I'm so hungry, and... Please, take me back. I just want to go home. No. No, he kept the bag over me the whole time. I heard his voice. But he honestly didn't say much when I was around. I'm just... I need this to be over. Please. Please, can we go? Please? We're gonna make sure nothing else happens to you, okay? Oh, thank God. You don't know what that... Oh, come on. Let's... let's get out of here. You... you do know the way back, right? Not sure what that connects to. 
Maybe a super secret chunks branch. I never expected to see again. Hillman! Hillman's back! Mother of God, kid. What happened? I was walking out, and someone threw a bag over my head. They took me... I don't know. It smelled like the inside of the first aid kit. I had to sleep on a steel floor and... Which one of you crooks bagged him, huh? Us? Why the hell would we do that? Waste of a perfectly good bag. You rambling kid, come on. <laughs> Let's get you cleaned up. You smell like used welder's gear. Mr. Halftown, I have some medical training. I'd be happy to. You stay away from me. I want whoever kidnapped my man found and dealt with, understand? I don't care if it's one of your people or mine or a fucking ghost. Find them. Of course. We'll do what we can. But... I'm not interested in excuses. I need to know who did this. Just find my man's kidnapper now. Are you going to find him? The guy who took me? Ah, I, I guess it might have been a bit naive for me to hope for a happy reconciliation, but you brought him back safe. That's what's important. Here, you have my sincerest thanks. But now, we've got a whole new thread to pull on. What are the chances I'd be able to convince you to help us find our kidnapper? Fine. I'm sure I can convince Nevin to trim some fat in the construction budget. Now, Mr. Kilman didn't seem to have a lot of information, but I caught at least one or two bits I think could help us find our kidnapper. I want to believe none of them would. But I've been around long enough to know how easy it is for someone to surprise you. So honestly, I don't know. But I think those hints Kilman mentioned about the kidnapper's refuge are the key to figuring it out. didn't he? Industrial antiseptic would be my guess. I know that smell. There was a building we were evaluating as a possible site for the retreat not far from here. 
an old research outpost. Seems like a decent match for the description of our kidnapper's hideaway. Here, the facility's coordinates. Head out there and see what you can find. 